Welcome to the Magic of Birdsong webinar. Hello Anne and Hannah, hello Barbara. Would you please just confirm that you can hear me, please? Hello Louisa. <laughs> it's a cold morning out here. A little bit of frost on the grass. Hello, Dame Hilary. Gosh, how wonderful that you're here live. I'm just waiting to hear that you can definitely hear me and then I will continue. This is new tech for me. In fact, I will write a comment maybe, that's a good way. Can you hear me? You can hear me, brilliant. <laughs> okay, so onwards. Welcome. I hope you can hear the birds as well. My name is Mary Jane. I'm the founder of Slip Through the Cracks Training, the podcast Know You Are Earth, and I recently did a TED Talk on Rewire Your Brain with Birdsong. And I am honoured to bring you this song today. I want to not just give you information, I want to give you an experience. So I hope you can listen at least to this first part in a time when you're not busy. Hopefully put some headphones on, even lie down. <laughs> And just relax. Oops. Let's go back here. Just organizing my slides. Here we go. So we're going to go back in time long, long ago, to when this place, wherever you are, unless you're in the sea, was forest. This is your home. You are sitting on the forest floor leaning back against a tree, breathing in the fresh smells of rich, damp forest soil. The sunlight shimmers gold between the trees and all around you, all you can see are tree trunks and small glimpses of forest floor. Because you can't see very far, you listen intently, reaching out with your ears as far as you possibly can in all directions. listening for changes in birdsong so that you know what to expect. You know these birds. You know where different birds hang out. You know their song. The chattering of starlings 
might let you know where a delicious fruit is available. The calling of crows might tell you where there is a dead animal that will attract scavengers that you could hunt. Sudden silence tells you that a predator approaches. These birds are an extension of you and your senses, giving you a much greater understanding of what is going on in the world beyond your ordinary perception. They are the bringers of news. So we'll zoom forwards back into time, back into now, now. And I'm gonna, you can open your eyes. I'm gonna do a bit of the information bit. I hope that you were able to, um, here we go. <laughs> Um, get an experience of the world that we have come from. <sighs> Contrasting that with today's world of the humming, whining, roaring, beeping, bleeping that we are surrounded by. Here comes a little car just to illustrate it. <laughs> Next slide, okay. Um, for six million years, we have evolved with the birds. And you see that tiny white line in the slide? That is the amount of time, comparatively, that we have spent with modern noise. So for me, <laughs> this slide, let me just make me a bit smaller, um, and that experience of being in the forest with no sound other than the birds is like the basic understanding for why. <laughs> of course we have this incredible relationship with the birds. Of course we love them, of course their song is tuned into our DNA, hardwired, into our understanding about life. <sighs> I can just see the warm orange glow of the sun just starting to come. When it pops over the horizon, I'll turn the camera around so that you can have a look. So, yeah, today, let me just get organised with this slide. We are surrounded by a world of traffic noise. And the World Health Organisation say that approximately 210,000 people die, die every year in Europe due to long-term exposure to traffic noise. And the reason for this is that um, these modern noises, particularly loud ones, sudden ones, they raise the blood pressure. They raise the heart rate, the arteries squish, um, uh, cortisol, is released into the bloodstream, uh, this stress hormone, and over a long period of time, this actually leads to cardiovascular diseases, um, heart attacks and strokes in some people. Um, <laughs> yeah, leading to that amount of death, it's pretty intense. But of course, modern noise is not the only um, stress that we're faced with today. We are surrounded by information 
of things, how we should be, what we should like, what we should buy to be fulfilled, to fit, to fit in, to succeed, to be popular. Enormous pressures right from being tiny, tiny in school, all the way, all the way through life. Um, we're surrounded by the news. Here comes the sun, here comes the sun. I'm going to just turn the camera around. I hope that you can see. Will it, what does it look like? Oh, just peeping, just peeping. <laughs> Sorry, it's all a bit random, but my intention is here. <laughs> I want to share with you. I want to share with you <laughs> the deep sense of okayness that I have discovered from being in contact with nature, even when we're surrounded by the news every day of all the stuff that goes wrong. Filled with fear and the helplessness, despair about the state of the world. Rushing along in our busy lives with our to-do lists. All this is creating patterns in our mind, patterns of habit, patterns that become addictive ways of thinking. And so that before we know it, there we are trapped again and again in the same worried thoughts, the same fearful thoughts, the same feelings of being helpless. But when we connect with nature, and, and not connect, but remember, that we are nature, then that incredible sense of belonging to a cycle is the power that can sustain us and make us beings who can move forwards in this world to actually create a world where everybody has enough. I believe, <laughs> you can tell I'm getting pretty emotional about this, I believe that remembering that we are Earth is the essential thing that we need to do to move forwards in a way where we don't make ourselves extinct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stuck with an impending sense of doom. There are ways to slip through the cracks. And I tell you what, when you start to notice the cracks, in all those addictive thoughts, in all that bombardment of consume more to be happy or fear this thing or feel disempowered. When you start to notice the cracks, you discover you are surrounded by cracks. And there is a light, a hope, a deep sense of trust that slips through the cracks with you. And birdsong is one of those cracks. And yes, that is why we are here. So, um, who am I? And <laughs> why do I know anything about this? <laughs> well, when I was little, right from being a child, I, f <laughs> I felt that pressure that I'm sure you probably got from me earlier 
about all these, the noise. I'll just call it noise, but what I mean, I don't just mean physical noise. I mean the noise of our heads, the noise of the media, the noise of the news. I felt that as a child and I would lie in the grass face down looking at the ants. And I used to wish I was an ant because they always seem to know what to do. <laughs> I didn't know how to be in this world. And then when I spent my entire time in the school uniform and saw my dad in his uniform, and I thought, surely, you know, here we are, these incredible creative beings. How can it be that we're supposed to spend life in a uniform following these rules, going into another uniform to follow more rules. How can it be? So when I was 18, I um, ran off to the woods with my friends and we built shelters, simple shelters from the bendy stems of hazel covered with tarpaulins. And for that summer, we lived in the forest and I had never had so much time in such close contact with nature before and I slept on the earth and I sat by the fire and it changed me, it totally changed me. <laughs> I felt accepted, I fitted in. In the forest I was really popular <laughs> with all the trees. I felt at home, relaxed. And it ignited within me a passionate desire to deepen this relationship. So for years I found ways to live simply. Until one day I became pregnant with our first child and in that moment the rules seemed to change. Suddenly, having an indoor toilet and running water <laughs> became higher priorities. And so, suddenly there we were, in a terraced house with the lorries thundering past, darkening and shakening the room. In the shop next door, the newspapers, with their horrendous headlines, were all laid out at knee height. The perfect height for a small child learning to read. And the pressures to conform and start fitting back into the uniform and go to school were all just looming on the horizon. And I was longing to be back in the woods, back with nature, where things seemed real. So like, <laughs> it was this crazy, unstoppable ache. Would not let me rest. So while my husband was at work, I sewed a yurt. <laughs> I visualized a life that I wanted <laughs> for my children. And I read a book about eco-villages throughout Europe. So that was 13 years ago. And uh, this is the first little yet. Let me move my picture out of the way. There you go. <laughs> That's where we lived for three years. Four of us in there. Um, in all weathers. There we are. In the snow. Little one year old in there. <laughs> there they are my lovelies. They are 17 and 14 now. Oh yeah, no, not ready for that yet. <laughs> and uh, behind me you can see the yurt that we live in now. I'm just going to check my notes because I've lost my track a little bit. <laughs> um, so my lips and fingers. Yeah, so that was 13 years ago. And since then, I've spent 
a long time in the forest. For the last year, I've been recording a podcast. You know, I felt this so powerfully about the difference in sound, you know. I could feel in my body the bird song. my mind compared to the other things that I mentioned and I started to think you know how would it be how would it be if instead of listening every day to the news of all that is going wrong in the world if we were to tune in to the birds and to other sounds of nature. To me, the birds sing with such joyful certainty. And they always seem to be saying thank you. How would we be as individuals in our daily life? How would we be as a society, as a culture? And how would we be as world creators? If we were to tune in, reawakening our ancient memory of belonging to Earth, of being part, a living part of this Earth. What kind of world will we create? And so I started to record a podcast. I did it all last year, Nature Sounds throughout the year. To start with, I was doing it five days a week. (laughs) There are 151 episodes, I think. They're only 10 minutes long. You can listen to them. They're really great. So anyway, I spent a long time... to, re- to record in the forest. It's not, ju- it's not like just walking through the forest, just listening to birds. To record and to think of you as I record. And to listen out, because sometimes cars go past and aeroplanes, that usually takes about three minutes for an aeroplane <laughs> to start and stop. Or a tractor. <laughs> and they're really loud. So, to record just a 10 minute podcast would sometimes take me hours. <laughs> I spent a long time sitting, looking at the wonderful patterns of nature around me. Um, just whizzing along here. And eventually, I did a TED talk on it. I did it in February. Apparently it takes about three months until it's public, so it isn't public yet, but will be soon. (sighs) Have you ever watched a bird soaring in the sky and wished to be that bird? with the freedom to fly, carried by the warm air currents, and able to see life from a different perspective. Throughout the world and throughout ages, birds have long been symbols of power and freedom. in myth and legend throughout the world. The song of the bird, their green language, is seen as a link between the human world and a supernatural or divine realm. Do 
checking my notes. Ah, yes. Now I'm getting into the research bit. <clears throat> so Eleanor Radcliffe of Surrey University. says that we have developed this deep, intimate connection with birds that we have hopefully experienced and that I'm sure you, you do, you do feel, I mean that's why you're here, that's why you were attracted to come to this webinar. But she says that we feel it because we've evolved for millions of years with birds pretty obvious really isn't it <laughs> she says that people find birdsong relaxing and reassuring because we are accustomed for so long to listen to them oops chickens going a bit crazy <laughs> you are supposed to be over there <laughs> got my little helpers so I've got a slide coming up here with words on it. I'm not quite sure what it says, and I hope it's going to be the right one. Yeah, okay. So, <clears throat> we'll just go with this. The cost of people suffering from stress in the European Union every year is 170 billion euros. I mean, that is a huge amount of stress and all those things I've mentioned, the layers of the noise, the layers of the be like this, consume this, be popular, the tweet on social media a lot, um, not to mention the constant undercurrent of the daily news, all these things create stress. Oh, I've got this big shadow from the sun now, haven't I? In fact, I'm starting to get a bit blinded. Um, <laughs> I might have to adjust the position. <laughs> Where's my cursor? Here we go. Just bear with me, I'm just catching up with myself. What with technology, chickens, sunshine, notes, and just being me. Here we go. Yeah, so back to Eleanor Radcliffe, who said that um, we find birdsong relaxing and reassuring because for millions of years we have evolved with them. And she says that birdsong helps people recover from stress. So we've got a ton of people suffering from stress and birdsong can help. Um, so Graham Davy from Sussex University discovered that listening to the news increases stress not only about the world in general but it even exacerbates personal worries. Can you still see me with that sunshine? <laughs> Should I do? I'm going to go like that, I think. Whereas... Listening to birdsong lowers the blood pressure. This is what um, Brighton Sussex Medical School discovered. They did a bunch of research on the patients in their hospital. I'm just have to gonna go with this and not with my notes because I'm starting to get confused. And they discovered that listening to birdsong lowers the blood pressure, it lowers the heart rate, it reduces stress, it improves the mood of the patients in the hospital. In uh, Alder Hay Children's Hospital in Liverpool, they play uh, uh, birdsong in the corridors because they have discovered that it keeps the children calm and they have a special recording of the dawn chorus that they play whenever they're going to give someone a treatment, like an injection or something like that, because they found that it 
helps tremendously with the patients. Um, yeah, it enhances patients' recovery. It actually helps people get better more quickly. It reduces the pain of the patients. Isn't that amazing? I hope you can hear that beautiful blackbird. It's just in a cherry tree over there. I'm sorry to talk through all this really. infiltrate you. Let it take you away. Let it remind you that you belong to Earth. research. Um, what's this one? Yes, okay. So Deepak Prasha, he's an audiologist at the University College, College in London, he discovered that exposure to noise can lead to diminished productivity and impaired learning. They did all sorts of experiments um, on children in different environments and discovered that the ones in noisy environments weren't doing so well at school. Um, and the diminished productivity that was to do with experiments in working environments. Whereas Glundal University in Wales did some different exper uh, experiments and they discovered that listening to birdsong makes you more alert. I mean, I wonder why. <laughs> Our years of being in the forest, of listening, of reaching out, listening with deep attention and awareness for information from the birds around us, of course, <laughs> makes us more alert. It also helps you concentrate. Let's see what this next one is. And improves your memory. <laughs> I didn't remember that. <laughs> okay, um, this is the Royal Society for National Health. They discovered that 88% of teenagers, the future, experience stress about looking good on social media. Okay, now we start to get really into my favourite bits of research. Um, some professors at Rochester University, in contrast to that, discovered that listening to birdsong reduces the pressures of societal expectations. I hope you, I hope you can hear me. I really hope you can hear me. Let me just check. I'm just going to check on this different page. I've got so many pages open here. Okay, there are a load of comments, so I guess that means you can hear me. I'm... Um, yes, brilliant. Okay. Okay, okay, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, just checking in there. I was just suddenly had this terrible <laughs> fear. But um, <laughs> I was just speaking to myself. <laughs> okay, back to the story. Uh, and yeah, sorry about the strange lighting. It's the uh, shadow of the computer while the sun is getting really strong. <laughs> so listening to birdsong reduces the pressures of societal expectation. 
think about that. I mean, that was totally my experience leaving school where I didn't fit in or be popular in my school uniform and then going to the forest and feeling completely accepted for who I am. I'm sure you have also had that experience. Just to be yourself, to be your own nature. And so birdsong helps to take us there. Bye, Bino. It's my little girl. She was 14 yesterday. She's just going to school, tiptoeing sweetly. Um, oh, where's my cursor? Okay. <coughs> And it encourages individuals to follow their own interests. Which I think is totally, totally brilliant because in this consumer world where they say buy this, be like that, do that. Well, the birds can help us really be our true selves. To really shine forth in the way that is natural to us. Because that wisdom that grows the forest, that flows the streams, that sings <laughs> in the song of the birds. That wisdom is the same wisdom in our hearts. The knowing of the potential that we have here as part of this planet. It's the wisdom that is rushing round our veins, that is pumping our blood, that is growing our bones and it is present in every single cell of our bodies. This same, same wisdom of earth, of bird song. The sun is really getting bright now. <laughs> okay, um, where are we? Okay, so what can we do about all this <coughs> in our daily lives? We can make enormous differences to our levels of stress, our ability to concentrate, to be more alert. just by listening to recordings of birdsong. There you go. But I want to encourage you to go deeper. Much, much deeper. And I have prepared a course to help you do exactly that. Somewhere in your daily routine, there is a bird watching you. She is in her usual territory, maybe in a tree outside your home or your office or classroom or in a park where you walk or outside a cafe where you eat, singing her song. This is her place. And she sees you. They watch with bright beady eyes all the time. I know because <laughs> when I go into the forest, the birds are singing their heads off. When I get out my recording equipment, they stop singing every single time. <laughs> I have to wait for about 20 minutes till they start again. But yeah. They are a lot more observant than we are. So there is a bird in your life, at least one, probably more. And we can start to reach out again to connect with individual birds or groups of birds 
in certain areas. And the Kalahari Bushmen say that when you notice a certain animal, its song or its track, then a thin thread is created between you. And as you notice again and again this same animal, this thread gets thicker and stronger, creating a connection between you, this animal, linking you back to the earth. So this ties in with some other very interesting, my favourite bit, my favourite bit of the research that I discovered. Again, it's those same professors at Rochester University, the ones who discovered that um, listening to birdsong reduces the pressures of societal expectation and encourages individuals to follow their own interests. So they also discovered that participants who were exposed to birdsong and other natural sounds felt a deeper connection to the world than those exposed to modern noise. I think I've got a slide that says that. Yeah. But this goes much further. Okay, so not only do they have this feeling of connection, but this feeling translates into, way, into the way they behave towards other people and towards the world, becoming more generous and thoughtful in their behaviour. <sighs> okay, I've got to tell you, to me this is kind of obvious nature we feel at one with nature and we love to feel the nature in us and and we feel kind we be kind because we love nature and we want to care compared to modern noise and do this and be like that and bleep on the phone and it all becomes a bit of a kind of annoying disturbance in the head and I get a bit frustrated and angry. That is my personal experience. <laughs> but this is actual science, which I know for some people is really important. So thank you to the professors of Rochester <laughs> who did the experiments and discovered this and wrote an extremely long and pretty complicated paper about it, I have to tell you. <laughs> yes, changing the way that we feel and behave towards each other and the world around us. So, for some reason I've got that picture next. So I went to extreme lengths to close the gap between me and my family and nature. It is not what everybody wants to do, it is not possible for everybody, and it is not necessary for everybody. I have created this course that will help you slip through these cracks let me see where I am in my slides. Oh yeah, I'm on slip through these cracks. Great. Through these cracks. Of the noise. Of the rush. Of the social pressures. How to fit in. Of the daily news. Of the addictive thinking patterns that all these things create. When I was 28, I found myself in very addictive patterns of thinking and ways of being. And I knew I could not continue like this. I went to Canada and I lived in an ashram for a year where 
it was a karma yoga ashram. I became a yoga teacher, but mainly I watched the patterns of the mind, the emotions. And when I came to the forest, I could see how all those patterns, they are reflected. Nature shows us the way through, beyond these patterns. She accepts and uses everything, recycling everything into nutrients for new life. And we can do the same with the patterns of thought and feeling that might seem to trap us and hold us back and means that we don't feel that we are fulfilling that potential that we know in our hearts. The nature of our hearts knows it. But sometimes we can feel stuck and we can learn from nature and slip through her cracks and use those things that we think we don't want, that we don't like, that we don't want to feel, that we don't want to think, they in themselves are some of the cracks to slip through. Yeah, sometimes we just get stuck. Addicted to fear, overwhelm, disconnected from the wild wisdom that is you. Here is a little animal track. I love little animal tracks. The addictive um, patterns of thought, they become like um, a motorway, a highway where all the traffic of thought and feeling is going. Busy, 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 this is the way, this is the way, this is the way. The cracks, it's like a little animal track that you might just see at the side of the motorway. At first, it does not seem like the obvious way to go. But I have discovered <laughs> To start to tread down the animal tracks. I've done this in the forest. There's a forest here where nobody goes. The hunt go twice a year maybe. It's a forest. It covers folded hills with many streams that run through. And I go there all the time. I spend hours in there. And there are the place is just full of animal tracks. And to start with, I just, I would follow different tracks, the animal kind of drawing me forwards. But now, some of those tracks, and it doesn't take long, they have become my tracks. They're the tracks that I go. They are now my new habit. And this is what we can do. We find the new tracks, not the mad motorway of habitual thinking and we must always do this because that's what happens in the mind. Physical grooves are literally created with patterns. They get deeper and deeper and deeper and that's how we get stuck in a rut. But we can find the cracks. We can find the animal tracks. And we can make our own way with our own true nature. <sighs> so there's an animal track and um, yeah, to engage the deep wild wisdom that is us. And I think this is the point where I'm going to show you my course. I love this picture of roots. It's roots of a tree going into a stream. Our roots are in the world of nature. We are nature. We are not connected to nature. We are nature. It is completely impossible to lose our connection. It's just sometimes in all the noise we think we have. So at this time, when the world is so 
challenging and the um, is even in question if we will continue as a species. Um, I believe the only way forward is to remember that we are part of one life. We are part of Earth. And we get stuck in the cracks and I'm going in circles. Hopefully you understand what I mean. And now I'm going to do something else technical. And I'm going to show you my course. Oh, maybe I'm not. Okay, I, I am going to, but you're just going to have to give me a tiny minute because I'm kind of new at this and um, it's really fun <laughs> and I think I'm not that bad and it's just about to work but I have to set something else up differently. And then, here we go, okay. Okay, so the course is slip through the cracks. Oh my goodness, I've done a, a spelling error. It says, <laughs> slip though the cracks. Please see an, an R <laughs> in the word. Slip through the cracks. <laughs> Learn from nature. How to transform despair to devotion, anxiety to awe, and pain to passionate purpose. This is three months of foundational training and three months of supported practice. I'm going to read the thing to you or kind of ad lib on it a bit. I invite you to join me so that we can really live with the powerful wild wisdom of nature flowing through us to do our best on this planet in service to earth know you are earth so it's divided into three parts the first part is the compass this is know you are earth this is the device by which we find our way and it's know you are earth so this, I've kind of divided it into modules, although this module continues throughout the others. Well, in fact, they all do. They layer into each other. It's not go there, do that, tick it off, go there, do that, tick it off. The, these work together. But we start here. This is the rock. This is our foundation. This is no, you are earth. And the first way that we are going to do this is to find your bird friend. To find a particular friend to create a relationship with no hidden agenda, with the pure innocence of nature in the song, a relationship that will never let you down, that you can listen out to the wisdom of nature's messenger in your ear. This is the first part, the introduction to this course. Later there will be many other practices that I will teach you weird and wonderful things so that you can start to move through life no matter where you are, literally where you are. You can be at the top of a high-rise building in the middle of a motorway thing or underground or in a boat or just anywhere at all. You can be in a meeting, you can be with your loved ones, doing anything at all and find ways to always hear nature and her wisdom in your mind, your heart, guiding your way to slip beyond the confusion of today. So there are bonuses with this. Ah, so <clears throat> the children. I have created materials to share with children. I mean, they're totally brilliant for adults. But you know all this stuff that I say and how, you know, it can seem like 
heavy and really serious and hard and in many ways it is. But at the same time, there are ways of fun and joy. Right here and right now. To work with these things. To grow and, oh gosh. So anyway, I've prepared stuff because the children are the future and I want, I think about them and I think about how for lots of children today it's difficult to have that connection with nature and I want to give it to them. So if you have children or grandchildren or nephews or nieces or friends who are children, you'll be able to share these games with them. so that they too know. Even if they live in the middle of a city, they too feel that they're part of Earth. I also do a bunch of audios. You'll really like them. If you want to hear a bit what they're like, you can check out my podcasts. They're 10 minutes long and they're great. So the next part is the map. This module is about mapping out. See where are we? So this is looking at how we feel and how we think. I will show you easy and fun ways to just increase awareness about that. Not with any thought of, oh gosh, I shouldn't be doing that and I must change this and I better start doing that. No. This is pure awareness with love and appreciation and I think that's all that's necessary. <laughs> the rest happens on its own really. Okay and part three. Oh, I love, love, love this bit. This is the root. So yeah we had the compass, we had the know you are earth, the way to find the direction, the map, the the territory of where we are and this is the root the wisdom vision inside us the wisdom of nature pulsing through us hearing it in our hearts and in our blood guiding us body prayers so this <clears throat> a lot of what I've been talking about it's probably seemed to be in the head but um, <clears throat> This is using the body as an instrument to bring up the energies of the earth, to bring down the energies of the sky and to really feel in your body that power, that life. So it's not all just thinking, this is physical movement. Yeah, I will show you ways to find your wisdom vision so that you know just what to do in life. Uh, so the next bit, um, practices of awe and wonder. As we are faced with all that noise that I keep going on about, Practices of awe and wonder are ways to help nurture and protect the mind because those things, they continue. Like, and it's a matter of developing ways to grow in strength, resilience, and just yesness. And awe and wonder is here, right now, every single day. And all we have to do is shift our perspective a little and it is as clear and bright as that sunshine in my eye. <laughs> okay, and there's a, a bonus that goes with that. I'm, I don't think I will tell you about it. I haven't taught this before, but I use it myself and it's really brilliant, every day and every night. And yes, I feel very excited about 
sharing this with you. It's um, a physical tool that helps to guide the, the mind. You know, the mind's like whizzing off. Okay, and then the last part of this is using that energy, that energy that was once in tied up in thought and emotion of going in circles and downward spirals, taking hold of that same energy, spiraling it the other way and moving it into positive action. And there is... I know it probably seems as if I'm infusing too much about this stuff that I've done, but it's brilliant. It is brilliant. In the forest, <clears throat> in the stream, <clears throat> the patterns that flow in the stream, the swirls, the eddies, the spirals, these are the same exact forms that literally create the physical form of the body and that create the waves that come through the air into our spiral ears. All the time in a kind of invisible way we're surrounded by waves and spirals and <clears throat> this webinar goes deeply into understanding that, seeing it, and then using that as a meditation, as a way to bring forward <clears throat> that creative wave spiral through us into the world. So where have I got to? Okay. Um, also included reflection journal, audios, creating a world where everybody wins ebook. This training is designed to involve minimal time on the computer, although there will be a travel companion Facebook group for those who wish. And almost everything in this whole course, once you've had the modules, can actually be done as part of everyday life. You won't have to sit down for ages and do something out of the ordinary, but you can do it as part of your ongoing life. And then here is a video which shouldn't kind of be showing like this. And when you click on the page, in fact, if you would like to go and look at the page, you need to go to um, www.knowyouareearth.com slash apply here. Um, is a little video explaining my pricing system. Because <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> this is the most valuable work that needs to be done on the planet now. <laughs> and I want to share it with as many people as I possibly can. <laughs> and so in the video I explain that I offer a very flexible pricing system so that those without a lot of finance can benefit from it that is also the reason that I offer the um, materials for the children for that same reason to spread it as far as I possibly can <clears throat> and the other thing is there is a potential to pay as much as you want if you are someone for whom 50,000 something or another is very little there are many people like this and you would like to spread this work, then you can, because all the money that is grown from this will go into spreading it and sharing it. I'm going to cry <laughs> because We have the potential to create a world where everybody has enough and we're not doing it and we can. And Earth knows how. <laughs> Sorry, all gone a bit crazy. 
Ah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so embracing infinite possibility, you can choose your thread. We're all threads in the wonderful tapestry of life. We are all threads of different colours, of different ways, of different qualities, and we can support each other. And those who have more finance can help support in a way that is different from those with less. So thank you very much. Oh yes, and here a bunch of testimonials of people who have experienced me being weird before and have liked it. Um, okay, back over to here. Let me see. Here we go. Here I am. Oh, back again. Oof. You can see all the cables behind. Gosh, it's totally different. It was pitch dark when I came out here this morning. I was with my head torch, really cold, sorting everything out. Um, I have a vision. It is when the pain of displaced people and damaged lands is transformed into communities of compassion and food forests. It is when, although we have many rich and different ways, we are connected by our one knowing that we are part of one life. We're healthy, vibrant, competent to make a positive difference. Emotion runs through us like a river of joyful experience no matter what the emotion we can appreciate it because this is part of being alive. We are alive <laughs> right now and this is a wonderful gift and there's one slide that I forgot to put at the end of my thing and it's actually a quote from a book that I've written and will be published later this year. Um, I think it's going to be called The Hero with 7.6 Billion Faces. And in the book, there's a pact. And the pact is, we will always believe in each other. We will never give up on the vision. And we will always inspire each other to go further. May this webinar be for the good of all beings. I send it as a seed out into the world. Thank you for listening. Oh, I probably need to quickly just show you um, the... Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, yes, our roots. Let me... Oh, look. This is where we come from. Um, look, there we are. Here we are. Here we are. Yes. If you would like to um, if you'd like to go further with me, I would love 
to go further with you. I need to get that slide down a bit. Oh, look, cool, this is fancy, isn't it? <laughs> and please go to the address you can see here, www.knowyouareearth.com. Apply here. I look forward very much to working with you. You are a powerful force. Together we are an incredible team. And good things are coming. <sighs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to turn off now. May you find joy in this day. I will send recordings if you'd like to share it with your friends. Um, you probably can. <laughs> I'm not sure how. I'll try to explain. <laughs> Bye for now.